By the by, by. You'll need to let me know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just have their hands yeah. up. Oh, I will do my best to do that. Because we do have two online. I hope so. Hope so. Uh, I say yes. You don't have to. I don't know. Yeah, the, 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 I did, yeah. I just said no to it. So. Oh, Andrew. Oh, are you got to be Come here. Come here. You want to sit there? No, I said, come here. Take it. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. That could be a good idea. I think at home on our comment, we can, if they anything raise their hand, we can allow. Uh, but I know it's harder for them to make this quick. Yeah, yeah. do step like uh, I asked Demetrius to put my watch out. I think it was going to be good. Okay. I can do that too. I can tell me if you're better at that. I did that. Okay. I used to do that for Lauren. Okay. So I can jump. Good for yeah. You can help. And letting people in and all. Yeah. Oh, guys, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then what's the deal? It's really slow. Um, yeah. 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 I did confirm that it asked me. Well, that's right. They're, they couldn't make it because they were in trade show. Yeah. 
Everybody, welcome to the uh, October PROA Presidential Homeowners Association meeting. Uh, and we're going to call the meeting to order in just a minute. We have a really, we have a busy and important agenda tonight, and we've got a lot of public speakers. So again, I want to ask that everybody keep it to three minutes uh, and uh, we'll listen and then we will get into the meat of the agenda. So uh, let's first verify that the meeting was properly noticed, was it? Yes, this it meeting was properly was. noticed. We do in fact have a quorum. We have two members on the line and the rest of us here. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Just the flag, please. Hold well, no, on, we got to find the flag. We lost the flag. You're going to have a flag lapel pen. There you go. There you go. Thanks, Jacob. Don't kill the bird. There we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's call a meeting to order. It's in order. And we start with our public comment period. Please, again, three minutes, and we will start with Paul Badaglini. Good evening. I'm Paul Badaglini, 1321 Arneson Avenue East. And then I'm here tonight not to criticize, I'm asking questions. Okay, I'm stating what I believe is obvious, and I just want to question it back to you guys. Getting a contract out tonight that should be by all business factors based on history, based on what performance has been done. Now, there's three functions that our grand manners has, and that is administrative, which consists of financial record keeping correspondence customer service and maintenance. Now, obviously, under administration, with two breaches, some of the correspondence that goes out with wrong addresses, not too good there. Customer service didn't start out well, getting better. Maintenance speaks for itself. So basically, what we're measuring them with is not only their degree of accomplishments, but the degree of failures. Uh, I don't understand words supporting them as well as they do as as long as they have based on their history so like i said i'm only questioning why what do you guys know that we don't know you know is there something that is that in, in the back the general population doesn't know that you're really doing a great job but this is all just a smoke screen i don't get it um we need to be ready for standard operating procedures and RFPs. We have to have that base. I hope we never have to use it. My hope, in all honesty, is that Grand Miners turns this around and we never have to do this again, but no three-year contracts, one at a time, one at a time. I don't care if we had to give it 10 in a row. If I go, we do. Uh, like I said, that's all I have to say. I'm not going to get into any accusatory stuff. Everybody knows their history. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And let's see, the next requestor is uh, Gary Hudspeth. <clears throat> Gary Hudspeth, 1471 Resolute Street. The management contract task force met on a condensed schedule and fulfilled your resolution by turning in a report with recommendations on time. Uh, I am disappointed that you are contemplating of not following the report's guidance. Now, there's no requirement that the board 
take the report and prove it and follow the guidance. But I'm still disappointed because you selected the volunteers for this committee who were subject matter experts in this type of work. And to not follow their guidance makes us wonder why we volunteered in the first place. I think you're setting yourselves up mm -hmm. if you're creating metrics that just because you can, you are going to find yourself in legal jeopardy when you start complaining about the metrics don't represent the actual data that you expected. Our highest recommendation was that you create a third party to gather the data and analyze it and report to you. It can't be done by management. It cannot be done by the board. You don't have time. It needs to be a third party for this to work right. But I think you've overextended yourselves not following the guidance of your own selected volunteers. Thank you very much. And uh, next up, Matt Luttinger. I still have oh, 15 you still seconds. Have, yeah, you still have time. One. I'm asking that you vote as a board so we can see the majority rules on what you decide to put in the contract. Make it official, not by consensus, but vote. Thank you. Mr. President, you missed one. You didn't. I don't have a room with a check mark. I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry. There's no check mark to which to speak. Oh, okay. okay. But you, yeah, you may speak. I'll put a check mark by your name. That's my fault. Oh, it's your fault. It's his fault. Um, Robert Stain, 516 Long Meadow Street. Um, I just wanted to point out to the board that the last survey was that was done uh, by the board, as mm. far as Grand Manners is concerned, is that 67%, I believe, of residents didn't believe that Grand Manors were fulfilling what we expected. Um, I want all the board to just consider that. I'm all for giving them another year to try and improve. But I think we've got to the stage after three years that we need to kind of get to a situation where they either get their maintenance together over the next year, or we have to start looking at RFPs elsewhere. That's just my Thank you very, very much. Okay. Now, Matt. Okay. Come on up. Matt Luckinger, 1334 Flagstone Avenue. So on the common of management contract, um, having been on the committee when we first hired Grand Manor and reviewed six other management companies, I would say it's the problem isn't Grand Manners, it is the people and the positions and the level of dollars that we put to some of those positions and experiences. Um, that is the main comment that I have. So maybe we underhired, underpaid, and that asks questions about budget, but it also experience. Having went through all the six companies that we uh, met with and looked at their numbers and all their proposals, met the people, all of them had pluses and minuses, I can tell you. Including Grand Manor. Um, and I don't think there's an issue per se that we are in, that they're in Dallas and we're here um, because they have people on to come and visit us on the grounds periodically and help Jacob and Lauren and others. So it's really do we have the right, do they have the right people in the right positions? Uh, the only comment I anecdotally I would say else is maybe technology was a little bit of a disappointment. Being I'm married to a technology expert, I certainly know what her expectations would be. And maybe there's some shortcomings there as well. Thank you so much. And now, um, is this Debbie McDonald? I, I, the name's going to So I am speaking as a resident and former board member. Um, just want to set that up there. The management contracts are very, very touchy, difficult subject. Um, I have sat on board when we went through the RFP, and um, there's actually some your people need money to so grant five over eight percent, five hundred and some signatures to get rid of CFP and CRP, this management company, um, which they very well could have done. We ended up reaching some type of a negotiation, but I will say that it's very 
simple and easy when we sit on the outside here to say, you know, this is just all stupid. I know better, I can do this. I think one of the reasons you elect board members, um, and they're all leaders with very diverse backgrounds and very diverse talents. Um, they don't always agree, which is important. We need to get all the information out. But one of the reasons you elect them is they get a lot more information that you get from um, just the social media, the back porch, the front porch, the wraparound porch, whatever the porch it is. Um, and I think there is a very significant piece um, that many of you may not know unless you've been on the board, and that there is a celebration joint committee. The homeowners are 75% of that, and the businesses are 25%. And I think there's a significant piece that Andrew may um, hopefully address more intelligent than I will as a treasurer to why that came into play also with the decision. Um, nobody ever says, yay, the management company is wonderful. The you just hear the bad. You hear what they're doing wrong. You hear the criticisms. You hear what we can do better because we all want to, um, but we have the 28 years. We're not perfect. And I think, um, there's a lot of people that would want the old management company to have. Um, Chavy is not necessarily the So I just want to say that um, whatever you guys work out, you're the board that was elected and I support you and thank you for all you're doing because it's a hard place to set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, another former board member, Lee Moore. Thank you. That is his name down to me. He's running late. Oh, he's running late? Sorry. Lee, you're late. You can't be on. I think Debbie signed the email. It looks like her handwriting now that I look at it. Uh, Mike Jackson. Player back in the bathroom. She's back girl. Hi, Mike. I haven't gotten up here to talk for a while. I know you're disappointed. Mike Jackson. Oh, it's good to have you back. I, I do it at the workshops. Yeah. Um, two things. One, first. Um, Comment on the management contract, a little different maybe perspective. The um, performance criteria you're working on and what you're going to put in there, I think it's fine and it's a good idea, but I think you're still treating symptoms. I think you're really chasing the symptoms of issues that are happening on a daily basis across a variety of topics and you're trying to find a way to focus on those. I think the underlying core element in it, a little bit of what Matt talked about, is the staffing. I mean, we really have had tremendous, tremendous turnover in staffing. I just took a quick look at it. I didn't run the numbers on it. Somebody should run for the last couple of years. Just the management report today with the number of positions that are being replaced and the number of positions that are open. And I'm not talking entry level positions, we're talking directors. So if you look at the turnover, it's no surprise to me that we're having trouble. I mean, this is an organization that just hasn't been steady. We haven't had a, a, a good team. We haven't had a team. I don't want to say good. That's not correct. We haven't had a stable team. Better way to stay in. So anytime you have trouble in an organization, you need to look at that. And we've got a problem there. So when you put together your performance criteria, I think there needs to be a heavy, heavy focus on retention and development and training. You just got to do that. And this is where these two come in because they've got a tremendous number of training programs, of programs I expect, and each employee has got to have a schedule of what training they're going to get, what development, so they can feel appreciated, so they can be part of the organization, and they stick around. But if we don't take care of our employees, they're going to leave. They can go any place. So that, I think, should be your biggest performance criteria you have, retention of employees and how you get there. Second thing, I sent you a note about the um, resale management, the resale fee the calculation and what I'm hearing out in the marketplace. Um, I, I think it's going to be a struggle to get it passed. I just think people are misunderstanding it. Um, some people are saying it's not fair. Some people are questioning the percentage that was on the ballot figure. They don't know how to do algebra or where the decimal point is and things. I'm getting all kinds of strange comments. Look, I know you wanted to remain neutral. I knew you wanted to let the community vote on it. I really would encourage you to consider tonight put on the agenda a motion to endorse this element, this change in the charter, just to endorse it. Because you're the leaders, you've approved it from the Finance Committee, there's been a lot of diligence on it. If you don't step up as leaders and tell the community what they should think, because most people are uninformed, don't want to be informed, or just a bunch of misinformation, I don't think it's going to pass. Okay. I'll wrap with this. Um, 
If we don't do this, and people need to understand this, if we don't do this, the master planning work that you did is done. We're going to be set way back. Number two, if you want to try to move forward, there's three options. One, we can raise fees, which will affect everybody, not just buyers. We can take on debt. I don't think too many people are going to be excited about that. Or we can do a special assessment. There's no other way we're going to get capital. So think about the consequences if this doesn't pass. Thank, thank, thank you, Mike. And right, now, Cliff McCullough. Uh, uh, Cliff McCullough, uh, 1444 Stickley Arts Park. I did send the board uh, some questions regarding the budget. I don't know if they need to bring them all up here or if you were going to respond back to the email. But there were just some issues I was curious about. Um, one, it said it was a 3.4% inflation rate, but actually the actual table says 4%. So I don't know if that's just a type of. Um, I was curious about some of the things. We have other income of almost $600,000. I think that amount of money could use a little better description of where it's coming from. Um, some of the expenses I'm curious about IT went up 263% 2003 to 2023 to 24, and it's expected to stay that high for the following years. Um, so just there were some other questions in there that I'd like to hopefully you can answer. Um, regarding the assessment fee, uh, I'll stand up. I, I'm against it. I don't think we need more money. I think we're trying to overspend for the community. Um, with regards to the master plan, appreciate people put the effort in, but right in the pros, they said the number one thing asked for, all four surveys with the community center. It's the last thing anyone's actually looking at. Instead, one of the top items for the first part is what I call the euphemistically lipstick on the pig. We as a community voted a referendum against spending $1.2 million on pickleball courts on lot D. And there's number one of their second proposals for the first phase is to spend $1.2 million on pickleball courts, call them multifunction, the reserve eight, four of the eight for pickleball. Why are we doing this? The community said they didn't want it. Thank you. With. All right, was there anybody I missed? Sure, come on up. State your name and your address, please. Eric Paul Miller, 201 East Park Drive. I would like to just make a comment about, since it is political season, political posters and banners in people's yards. Apparently, we do have uh, rules in the community, which I endorse having rules in the community relative to having appropriate signage for whichever party you're in favor of. Otherwise, it gets completely out of hand. Apparently, when people choose to break these rules, we give them 14 days to take them down. Apparently, there's no consequence during that time frame as long as they're taken down. So, you know, our neighbor down the street has a banner and a blow up doll of I'm sure you can guess who um in the back in the Acadias and they've been told apparently you have 14 days. So if that's the case, anybody within 14 days of election can go out and buy whatever they want and put it in their yard. And no matter how outrageous or inappropriate or untasteful it is, we're not going to do anything about it. And I think that's a problem. I don't know how you fix it. I'm not giving you a recommendation how you fix it, but I think it's a problem in this community, in any community, when you allow one side to do whatever they want and the other side through maybe choosing to be strengthful, not doing anything. It's just, I think it speaks ill to the community. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. And now Lee Moore has arrived. Whoa. Whoa, just. <laughs> Just made it. Wow. I didn't have time to prepare for a second. Thank you, Lee Moore, uh, 711 Mulberry. Um, first, I want to thank the board. I know it's been, we've had several meetings with CJC and we've been very busy. And I know you guys have worked very hard. And to come to this point for uh, approving a budget is obviously difficult. Um, I just wanted to go over just real a couple of things that I heard from the back porch. Uh, some things that I, I think that it'd be great if we uh, were able to give you, give you my opinion. It's for what it's worth. Um, 
I understand that there is a question about uh, a contract for uh, Grand Manors. I wanted to address that. In my opinion, um, I think that we all know that Grand Manors um, has needs to improve. They know that themselves, and they've been working on that. So I, I applaud them for that. Um, I do think my concern is a one-year agreement versus a three-year agreement. Um, that a one-year agreement would be very difficult to maintain staff, to keep staff, to get good staff here. And that is really my concern. We do have a 90-day outlaw still, um, but I think that for the community, I do not want to go through the entire process again with the new company. I think that was really, quite honestly, our, our Achilles heel was the process that we went through um, with a new company and the, uh, um, the, the handover. I think the previous board did not do a great job with that. So I appreciate what you guys are doing. I know it's not easy to get a new company up to speed, but I think that a three-year agreement, even, even though if you put an RFP process in that three years, I think we'd be better off as a, as a community. Um, I really want good staff here. I really want people to stay for a while. And I, and I don't think we could do that with a one-year agreement. I know as somebody who does agreements and third party, it'd be very hard to get staff to stay and get uh, for that. So that's my biggest concern. That's what I want to say, but thank you for your help. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you all for your comments. I appreciate them all. Online. And uh, what, oh, we have an online comment? Uh, sure. Anybody have one? I don't see a hand, so we're good. All right, moving along. Uh, do I have a motion to adopt our agenda for tonight? Provision I'll second. Make a motion to it. Oh, okay, second. we've got a motion and a. You're the second, Charles. Jared's the, the motion. Uh, discussion. I would like to see want? if we could move discussion item D to the uh, top, since I assume there's someone in the audience that's there to speak to it. Service area budget. No, discussion item. D. Oh, discussion item D. Is there someone? Is there, there someone here? Letter changed. Talk about town hall remediation. I don't think so. There is not, Eric. There's not, Eric. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other changes? So yeah, change would be uh, brought up the board meeting, then throw it on. It's a uh, motion to approve U.S. Treasury renewal reinvestment. Between six and 24 months. Currently, they only have 12 months. So it's a recommendation from the Finance Committee to go. a little bit more flexibility in renewals. Okay, so Did motion that, to approve using long, that slightly longer maturity treasuries? Uh, between six and 24 months. Six to 24 months. And those are going to be latter? Yes. Yeah. Did that have to be noticed 48 hours before if it's an action item? I'm under the impression we can just add discussion. Do you think they're uh, should, should be noticed? Can we put that so yeah. that it's sooner than a month? We can put it on a workshop as an action item. It's a point of that. It's got to the last board meeting. We don't have that, but yeah, on the workshop. To the yeah, workshop. I just I we're adding a day of. I I have it of concern just to throw it on. Okay. Any? Yeah. I, you know, I got to tell you though, the one thing that that is is that's just really basically housekeeping. Uh, and then the other one would be for L. L. I think we need to change that to motion to approve one additional member. And the reason being is that the other person is not a. It's okay. We'd love to be a realtor. Um, not according to our bylaws. No, you're allowed in the master resolution. It said it can be an owner, a quick standing, or a renter. The master is. It says that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's in the impact um, resolution. Where is it? Where does it say yeah. that? Because the bylaws, the bylaws state that you have to be a homeowner to be on a committee. I'm on the committee application. Homeowner or okay. also, it's always been. But the application can be wrong if the bylaws state you have to be the resolution. Yeah, but what about? But I, I think to Katie's point is, what do the bylaws say? And I am not the. I'll pull it up. I'm not. Let me see if I can find. Can we part of the discussion of that item? Let's have it be part of the discussion. Yeah. Yeah, because. Anything else you guys want to change? Can we add a discussion just around, um, and it can be toward the end, just a uh, a discussion around the um, the current charter amendment, just around kind of the communication campaign. We mean we have that. Oh, we do. Oh, we do. We okay. added the FAQ on the board review. 
has got it. Okay, thank you. Oh, we yeah, we well, I, I have to ask to add that, don't I? I was gonna let you add. Ask, okay, we want to add to the discussion, Charles, uh, an item so that we can discuss this uh, FAQ document to go out to the homeowners on the uh, on the charter amendment. Yeah, I have so, many. So we're gonna let's add that in. Somebody's trying to get into the meeting that can't with the screenshot of the phone number and the ID number. Here? What do you have as your ID number? That's the X. The ID is that really long number there. So 423194? No. 282555. No, on the right. On the right. If you join in by phone. Oh, oh joining. It's, it's on our agenda this week. Yeah. Oh. 604 pounds. There's no okay, so basically we're the motion now is to adopt the agenda with a minor change in the discussion item, adding the discussion of the letter to go out to the community about the resolution. Any other changes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, approval of the minutes. Motion? For both. Motion Second. for both. Second. Discussion? All those in favor of adopting the minutes from the two meetings? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion to adopt the financial the financials for 24, September 24th. Yes, we do have Jennifer, our finance manager online to present the financials for September. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, September financials were good. It was uh... Everything came in nicely. September ended up with a 44,000 surplus. Um, so year to date, we are at a deficit of 9,600. So that's looking pretty good. Our fund balances currently right now are as follows. We have the operating fund at 1.6 million. Replacement is at 1.7 million. And the capital fund is just over 4 million. September was really good. I do want to point out uh, for some covenant fees getting paid, the interest being earned on our investment accounts and on the resales um, amounts that we're getting. That's helping to drive our income up nicely for September. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, just a couple of comments. So last month we were talking, we were at a $55,000 deficit for the year. Now we're around 10,000. So overall numbers are really good for September. Um, one thing that's kind of keeping us afloat so far is that the other income is over expectation by 103,000. Uh, 95,000 of that amount is made up of investment income, which uh, that's straight to the capital, which is good. That's for 33,000. Uh, the other two are a little surprising. Uh, covenants income is over 45,000, and late payment fees are up 27,000. I'm not sure how sustainable that is through the end of the year, but Let's hope it's not. we've lucked out so far in trying to, to balance the higher spend this year. Uh, but overall, looking at September, uh, the cost spend was 8,000 under the expected budget. So a, a really good month on the cost side to, to keep that in check. Any other thoughts on financials? Thank you very much. Um, I just have the board a copy of the Universal Consulting yeah, it's not in compliance with the bylaws. Thank you. Well, we agreed to it. We signed it. Don signed it. You all yeah, but if it doesn't, but but so, it, but so if it doesn't, point, point of order. The yeah, bylaws. Point of order. I yeah. So we need to do a, a motion to adopt the financials. Financials. We're done with those. Anything else? Approval. Motion to approve. Aye. Aye. Oh, all those in favor? Yeah. Aye. All right. Aye. I think we. You, did you make a motion to approve it? No, motion. No. Finance. No. Right, motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. Right, there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, committee and partner updates. Anybody want to do committees? Yeah, I'll jump in this case. Financials over to technology. So uh, I guess negative news overall is that I don't foresee the LNR application getting out this year uh, with the director of IT transition. That kind of set us back a little bit. So. That's probably looking more of a Q1 uh, initiative to be completed. Uh, but with that said, the Gallagher application, all, all the doors have been set up up and running. There was a little hiccup on Artisan Park, but 
still working through that and, and getting Bill set up over there. So that's a positive for uh, in the next upcoming technology meeting, we'll discuss when we can roll out the Gallagher app to the homeowners so that they can use their phones to unlock the doors throughout our community. So the original plan was that it would all be bundled into the LNR application, but since that is lagging, uh, just hopefully over the next month, we can test any other Gallagher app so that it is functional and prepared for the community. So what's the hiccup with the was it with Gallagher or Button? The company folks that is doing this. I think it was access of different servers that Artisan Park needed a computer to get into the various databases that are housed on fire routing our site and getting everything you're going to get broken. And then obviously we have the director of IT hired recently, so uh, technology committee is looking forward to the first meeting with him and getting things back on track. So that are the technology committee updates. Any other updates? Well, I don't actually I don't have any committee updates, but I I'm gonna ask Jacob because you said to wait for our meeting to ask management. I'd like Nikki can send um a signed copy of all code conducts to for all my committees to the board, please, when she can if she has a chance. Okay. And I don't have any reports on the committees, but I have a report from Kathleen. She's unable to make it tonight. Can I read the foundation? You may. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this is the October report. The foundation supported our community by hosting a community connections that was well attended. I want to thank Cassandra Starks, the CD supervisor that has participated in all community connections during her term that has served almost grand residents, have to say positive um, feedback on that. Celebration Foundation supported Creation Village School Golf Scramble, Pink On Parade 5K with a water table, Volunteer Fair at Celebration High School and the Homecoming Parade this week. By the way, that Volunteer Fair was awesome. Thank you, Debbie McDonald. It was a pleasure to be there. Um, the foundation events that happened this month were porch parties that were throughout the community where almost 150 residents stopped by various porches by me as a sidewalk throughout the villages, took a seat and sipped lemonade together. The next porch party is scheduled for January if you'd like to host or attend as a community resident. Yeah. This Saturday, we will support the Rotary of Celebration Pancake Run and Next Saturday, November 2nd, is our annual Memorial Garden Remembrance Ceremony at 10 a.m. at the Memorial Garden. That's an amazing event just in itself because it, it remembers all of our loved ones that have passed. Residents, the holidays are upon us. Join us for a tree and ornament event with Crowell on Thursday, November 21st at the Island Village Clubhouse at 6 p.m. to create an ornament and hang on the community tree. Then help us start the holiday season with a concert series and Bob Tape on Wednesday, December 4th at 7.30. Tickets are on sale on the website or in the office. Then on to the Sparkle Soiree on Friday, December 6th. This is going to be an amazing event that starts the weekend at the Holiday Home Tour at the Magical Marketplace. With 12 stops along the way and opportunities to holiday shop for decor and more, such as baskets, baskets, and more baskets. Tickets are on sale online or in the office. And that's from Kathy. That's all I got. All right. Thank you very much. Any other committees? Have a quick update from Artisan. And they had their Halloween event and they received a lot of positive feedback. Um, one of the main things that they said that was um, a great added bonus was having the sheriff's department on site to help facilitate and make sure everything ran safely between crossing from the field into the um, into the haunted house area, that crosswalk, and that was actually paid for by Real Manage on for their behalf. So they're really appreciative of that. And that was a fun event because I scared a lot of people. I love that event. Anybody else? 
CCDD canceled their meeting. No, they didn't. They well, they, last night. I, was I know that the last night, the, the, the October one they canceled, the oh. early October one. So I didn't, yeah. I was at last night. How was last night? It was very good. Anything, you said goodbye to Cassandra. Anything controversial? No, we just spoke positively without any connections. We talked about the pond. They talked about the ponds and the issues they have with their vendor, big time issues, but they gave him another chance. And that's it. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. All right. Motion to approve the committee partner updates. Not necessary. Unnecessary. All right. Then we're going to move into the exciting action items, which is starting with A, which is the management contract. And we discussed this at our workshop. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to decide how we best make a motion to get into the discussion for this. Motion for discussion. Why don't? Pardon me? No, no, there is no motion. There is no motion for discussion. It's motion to approve management contract. Then we enter in discussion. If there's a second, there is no motion for discussion. Good job. Is that the best way to do it? That's how you yes. do it. All right. Motion to approve management contract. I'll move. Yes. With, for discussion. I'll approve it just to discuss, but we don't know what contract we're Right. We don't know anything yet. Discussion we'll follow. we'll, amend, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll amend the motion follow. after discussion. Correct. Exactly. All right. So do we we I I move to second it. Andrew? Okay. Now let's discuss. Let me start this. Huh? You want to vote? No, I want to discuss first. I want to discuss a couple of things. At the last workshop, we discussed um metrics and three versus one. The options were one at 7% or three at 5% per, correct? Yes. Um, Make sure I'm understanding. Yes, that is the personnel fee that- That's on the personnel fee. Now, you, that's in addition to the regular annual fee. That's in addition to the management fee. So the management fee, this is the, this is the percentage of payroll. Management fee is the same on both contracts, right. but it's increased. It has increased from the previous contract. That's correct. To just nine thousand. It's nine thousand. It was nine thousand. It has increased to ten thousand four forty. Ten four forty. Okay. So the one, the five or seven percent we're talking about is on top is the payroll fee, and uh, we discussed whether we would go with three at five or one at seven. Uh, there was some interest in going one at seven because of the shorter term, uh, and then there was interest uh, going three at five because of the lower cost. The difference is $47,000 a year between going for the one year at seven versus the five year at or the three year at five. Got a lot of numbers in my head. Uh, the other thing that I think we <clears throat> need to bear in mind when we consider this is the fact that no matter how long the contract says the term is, the contract is in reality 90 days. Because we can cancel the contract with 90 days notice and immediately go to an RFP if we need to. Um, I think we've made some, I, personally, I've been on this board now for seven months, this, ver this version of the board, and I truly believe to some of the points made tonight by residents, that dramatic improvement in the employees at Town Hall has occurred during the past seven months. When I came on this board, we had people who didn't know if they were still going to be employed. They, this was a very frightened group of employees. And they were scared for their jobs. If you are scared for your job, you do a bad job. I would do a bad job if I thought I, if I thought I was about to get fired from my job. You think I'm going to do my best? No, I'm going to be looking for another job. That's what I'm going to spend most of my energy doing. I think we we I think that Grand Manners has actually stepped up in some extraordinary ways to improve our situation, but it will not be an overnight fix. It will not be an overnight fix. Metrius is doing yeoman's work in bringing our executives up to speed and making them the best they can be. There has never been a management company at a homeowners organization that I have found anywhere in all of my research that has been loved by their entire community 
and in fact, not even their entire career. We have had boards trying to get rid of these guys for, for a couple of years. We've had boards trying to get rid of CCM, CCMC for 20 plus years. I went through an RFP myself. My wife, when she was on the board, went through another RFP herself. Lee went through this. We've all gone through this. And there's always this belief that there's something better. There's this pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. We're going to find the perfect management company. It's not the management company. It's the employees that work for the HOA, basically, even though they work for, for Grand Manors because we can't be hiring them. We don't have the band. So, um, and the other thing is, is that our partners at Kanoa uh, have been for many years kicking in about 25% of the CJC expenses, which include the town hall building, a chunk of the staff, a lot of our costs to the tune of about $500,000 a year. They have every legal right. Should we, and, and I get their point, as Lee said, they want continuity with management and employees. They'd like to see how we work. If we have the same employees and, and, and a lot of guidance over the course of a year or so, they have said, we're gonna, we're gonna still continue to pay you more than we legally have to, pay, pay into the community more than we legally have to. But if push comes to shove, they can go down to $31,000. $31,000. That means we have to make up almost a half a million dollars in homeowner dues. We already have a budget that people are upset about. Service area budgets where the reserves are being funded, trying to find the money to see some of the master plan to fruition, trying to fix the 851 building, which we're going to have some terrific updates on, by the way, very soon. Uh, I would like to, my suggestion is that we agree preliminarily because we don't have it in writing yet. We don't have the metrics in writing yet. They're not nailed down that we preliminarily, because we have to approve a contract with Grand Manors with three years at 5% with the, the their acceptance of metrics and the terms that we laid out preliminarily about a thousand dollar fine if they don't meet their metrics for the month, for each metric they don't meet for the month. So if it's nine metrics, it's 9,000, they don't get 10,000, 10 metrics, they don't get their fee for the month. They think that's fair. They want to live up to metrics. They want to do this as much as we want them to do. There, I see there's no other way. If we go to RFP, we will start over. Start over from scratch. We will have at least six months and probably more like 12 to 18. All of the top level employees are going to leave. We're going to have to bring new people in. We're going to have to bring in a new company. We're going to have to bring in new software. We're going to have to bring in new record keeping. We're going to have to train to people again. I see disaster and I ran for this board and I don't know about the rest of you, but I ran for this board to get some things done. We've gotten a playground done. We've gotten some parks beautifully redone. I wouldn't get on the rest of them. I wouldn't say, I mean, the. Grand Manor's failure in the past two years. I agree. But that was also under a board that was giving them forward guidance. I. I Are you good? And I will say. Problem with what. Contract failures and accountability. But Jackson was the one who go ahead said go ahead with that that crappy contract. Wasn't that was a contract. It wasn't even it was a letter. Yeah. Right. We look to our make and sure we're signing. That that is part of their contract is to make sure the association is in compliance with vendor contracts. So they they failed there. But you, I think anybody who works who's ever worked with Jackson Mummy knows that calling Jackson Mummy on something unless you have the most I, powerful person on the planet. I understand. I, and I don't want to going forward. Can I clarify a question from something you stated that you said? It sounded like Grand Manners was agreed to the $1,000 performance. I believe they are. Okay, so I you got to, I, you know, I talked to Stacy today. So that's something that, that is in the realm of discussion and possibility. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's that's I think news to all of us here. Yeah, we just talked before the meeting. Oh, okay. However, they haven't they okay. haven't seen the metrics yet. But, but again, she did look framework. at the meeting. She did look at the meeting. The whole meeting. And the framework that you heard 
What's reasonable, you said? The framework's reasonable. Again, it's, a it, it's those metrics have to be the acronym of SMART, right? Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound, right? If we can get there where there's no ambiguity and we all agree to that, then absolutely hold us accountable for getting our job done and we'll pay for when we make mistakes. I, I have no issue with that. Okay. We also have to understand that 90 day out, they can walk in 90 days. They can they too. Choose to and just leave us. And then we're really up shit's creep. Sorry. No. So I guess- Oh, wait, we do have a child. Uh, we do have a child. Oh, yeah. So comment on the law, it's just the whole process. This year, I was more hopeful that we'd make more progress with Grand Honors and staff on site that we would see more improvement. And have we seen some improvement? Yes, but unfortunately, we had to change the community manager who was out for a few months. The director of IT was out for a couple months. Maintenance, we are just getting back on board with their director. So the staff on site has been short staffed substantially. And <laughs> It's not, I think, a true representation of when we have the right vehicle in position, what the results are. Has it turned a corner a little bit? Yes, but I think there's a lot of running we still to go that I expect further improvement. Um, you know, I, I was coming in to this board thinking, okay, you got one year to prove it, and now we're gonna move on to something either with you or without you. But with all the monkey wrenches thrown in this year, I don't think there's a proper animation just for this one year that me as one of the new board members can say, the failure is the staff or the failure is grand members. And I know people want to lump that together and, and point fingers, but personally, I can't make that based on what I've seen so much. So, and the one last thing I'll add is, I think Stacy was along the whole time, Matrius, I don't know if you were newer to the count, but prior to this last year, I don't think Matrius or that position was really involved in our community. And this year we've definitely seen it. And probably because there's been more issues than past, but that is a huge step, I think, that we all can agree that's something that maybe wasn't there the first two years they were here, where this year, and maybe it's because they were potentially losing the contract, that they put more reserves into our area to try to get fixed. So <laughs> if we do this three-year extension, you know, I still see it as this upcoming year is gonna be important as far as if things aren't continuing to build on the trajectory that is you are our management company that is performing to our expectations is that something where we're looking at right now putting you on notice of worst case scenario is we're starting an rfp sometime in 2025 for the six-year renewal of having that process so it's not that anything's starting immediately but that we're all going into it as you had the first three year extension, the next three years, if that's what it gets to, is definitely gonna have an RFP and go through that process. So there's no surprise, there's no anything. Now that could be move forward depending on your performance, but just putting that out there as here's the framework of, yeah, we are gonna do three years. We do want you to succeed, but as a community, we need to take steps to make sure that we have appropriate time to do reviews, make sure that you're giving us an appropriate deal. You're the right management company, things of that nature. So that's where I stand as far as I, I'm comfortable with the three year at 5%. I'd rather give them the 5% than the seven. I don't want to, I don't want to lose out on that 47,000 and I don't see compensation decreasing anytime soon. So 47,000 next year, but that's just going to continue to increase with that 2%. So, you know, we can talk about more specifics and I appreciate the performance piece, which maybe that's where we settle that in the next 30 days but glad we can maybe get some framework discussion here to then finalize the We do have a comment from a board member online. Yes. For, but there to echo or what you were saying, just with staffing, uh, I wanted to provide you a little number that was based off the conversation. From our on-site management staff, 70% has been uh, is new staffing within the past year, and 85% of that is new staffing within the past four months. And to clarify one thing, Andrew, this role was here last year. It was on site that was at the meetings and it did cause some of the issues that we had. But this is not a new role. 
brought to the association. It was here last year. Demetrius's role was a different person. Okay. Right. The role was here. It was local. And it was part of the issues that we Yeah, had. that's that's a great. So they they did allocate someone here for that role. I and they appreciate the replacement. I appreciate the replacement of Demetrius to <laughs> and the quality thereof. Eric, Eric. So I think the big thing for me that I get concerned with as the ARC liaison mainly is consistency, and the biggest piece is is that we in my opinion, need to figure out as a board to, you know, Katie, to your point, you know, we had this, you know, other roles prior and that sort of thing, but I don't feel we had the right fit of a staff member in there. One piece that I think that we have seen as a board is number one, there's a little bit of you get what you pay for um, in some of these roles where we know that if we want a higher caliber person, that person may cost a little bit more. And then on the flip side of things, the longer that we can have someone in the role in order for them to train them, it, it somewhat doesn't matter what management company is there is as long as they understand the community and understand what they're trying to do uh, for an ongoing basis. The many of the struggles that we have in the community as it relates to either things falling through the cracks or, you know, different, different pieces, I tend to point to it's because of a change in staff um, that, that, that we've had. And it's, it's hard to keep track of, of, of a lot of those things. As, as folks have pointed out, there's still a 90-day out clause. I am deathly afraid, to be honest, that that clause works both ways um, because I don't know what yeah, see, just, I, I, yeah. do, I don't know what we would do um, if, if we turned around and, and Grand Manners noticed us and said, you know what, we're, we're out in 90 days. Um, and I think, th to me, the biggest piece is, is that I can ask us as a board, no matter what the outcome of this decision is, is, is that we do try to work together on it even if we don't uh, agree to to whatever it is that we do try to work together to to figure it out uh, my, myself included on that i just want to make sure i do think that we are making good progress in different areas we're not always going to make everyone happy by the decisions that uh, that that we make but we do need to make sure that I, I do think we all have the community's interest at heart and we need to continue moving forward in that direction thank you uh, Derek. Okay, charles Sorry, can you hear me? Charles? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I was hoping to really take a few minutes and direct a few questions to Katie and Jared, because I think from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, it, it seems like their voices, the perception is that they're not being fully heard or appreciated as we vote on the topic. And I think it's important to note that, that this is where we make decisions, right? We make decisions in this boardroom, not on social media, not through side conversations. So I, I think it's important that we talk about that and we hear their concerns. And what I've, what I've heard at this point is go to RFP. Um, I haven't heard a strategy. I haven't heard detail or end to end, how is this going to look and how would we implement? There were a few bullet points from Jared, I think around the time of the, the breach, but, but frankly, I thought they were poorly developed. They didn't have depth, they didn't have vision. Um, this is where, this is your opportunity to really talk to us and build consensus. So you're hearing from several of us on the board around kind of our position around renewing, but you both have been fairly vocal about kind of the other position around going to RFP. So I, I really just want to understand the, the, actually the verbatim was, I'm asking that we immediately go to RFP. This is from Jared to the next top three management companies from the previous RFP. We don't need a committee. We need to be clear and act quickly and decisively as the leaders of this community. So I'm just curious, can you elaborate on that? Because I don't, I'm, I'm curious, how does recycling the RFP in a short list, how can we ensure greater success? The community has changed a lot over the last few, four years. So what are your thoughts on that? I'd, I'd really love to pick your brains on that. I don't have a response. You don't have a response, okay. So how does moving to another management company guarantee success? Charles, hold on. You want, me to let it go. you want me to speak? Yes. I don't have a response to that. I will state what I should have stated at the very beginning. I believe that. I do believe we should go to RFP. I think it is our responsibility. To, and that we are being. We're, I don't want to leave any. Um, RFP. I would. 
agree with everything that was said about staff and me. Term. I think that it is our responsibility to make sure we're being competitive and making sure we're effective. I, I think we should go to RFP. I actually agreed five, which I want. Don's point. Put it to them. Prices are going competitively in the market. I think it is the risk. Have every other contract. RFPs have million dollar contracts that are three years. This is different. I understand people. I don't see how different. So I think we should have an RFP for the next year. And I will vote in. You may. So to your point, Jared. Yeah, Jared's Jared, 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 mic is. Hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, Gerald. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, we, so, we can't hear, but we can't hear, Jared. I'm just saying the oh, mic is. Yeah, yeah, you need to speak. You guys, both of you need to speak. To your point about staying. When we did the R, I'm not yelling at you. When we did the R, me, Gary can attest to this. There was no guarantee that Grand Matters, Stacy, was going to keep our staff. So a new company could come in and say, you know what? We hear all this crap going on. We're just bringing in our own staff. So you can't say you want to keep the staff. You can't. You, right? If, if you write the RFP, yes, you can. You can. They're, they take well, I can. If I may. You may, because we, we brought you to the table because this is a management contract discussion. And by the way, can you say one thing before? And by the way. Yes. I am allowed to discuss. You me. are allowed to discuss. But I'm you not allowed. Vote. Yes. If I could have people on that side of the table speak up louder, we're having problems online. We will be. I wanted to answer Charles before. No, okay. okay. Um, the way I feel about this right now is I do not think this discussion on the management contract needs to be tied to an RFP discussion. I think that we can discuss things separately. And regarding the management contract, to, to tie it to an RFP, I don't like to say, oh, if you go with a one year, that automatically means you're going to an RFP. That's not that's not the case, because if they if that was the case, they would not have offered us a one year term. So in from Graham Manor's perspective, a one year term is an acceptable offer, and it does not a 100 percent mean that you're going to an RFP. What it means is you're going to renew for one year and then renegotiate. Same thing we did this past year. So that's that's my thoughts on that. And I and I feel a one year is an acceptable offer from them. And if it's the cost difference, if that's the issue, I think there's room in the budget to to make some changes. That's and I will say to I put some forth in Pro, I've had a, a opinion and in a lot of what to do presented any um to charles point majority of the board hey folks it, it's still cutting it's still cutting hey, charles, out. Hold on, no, no, it, it's still cutting out is what i'm charles, saying hold on, we can't we yeah we can't hear him <laughs> i can't I'm, I'm speaking no, yeah. i don't want to sound like i'm yelling <laughs> sure yeah it's the call. Anyway, okay. Um, go ahead. Go, you go ahead and finish. I, you done? I'm happy to go to RFP. Most of the people don't want to listen to that, so let's not spend that time. Okay, Charles. Yeah, but 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 you've made it a point over and over. And when we Charles, leave this let's room, let's not you, have an argument over this. No, cause... but but no, but it's important that we get it out now because when we leave this room, to Eric's point, if we're not all on the same page, and then we're going out and talking about RFP. I, I just I'm trying to understand that because this is where we make the decisions, not on Facebook, not on social media. So you have a chance to defend your argument. Are you saying that you don't want to go to RFP? I want to go to RFP. Uh, Charles, I'll put it this way. 
Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, but if the majority of the board is not looking to do RFP, why would Jared put work into something that isn't going to see the light of day? Yes. Now, go on, go back to RFP, just one final thing on that. It's, we need to set the expectation where every three years there's going to be an RFP on it. So I, there's no surprise, because I think some people are on the fence of, you know what, we go to RFP, it's not going to affect anyone. We do go to RFP, half the people are going to leave. And that's definitely an opinion thing. But and if yeah. you're in our agreement that every three years, if that's what it is, an RFP is going to happen, then there's no issue. It, I just want to think something of the scope of management. It's not a landscape contract that to put that out to an RFP every three years may somehow, somewhere be considered, someone might consider fiscally responsible. I consider it managerially irresponsible. I think that's way too often to put somebody through that. To create an RFP, you've created RFPs. How much work does an RFP take? It takes a team of people, and I would say hundreds of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars based on the total amount of people that are involved in getting that completed. Just in terms of time, right? And just in terms of time. No, so we're to do every six years. I, we, I think that we can set an expectation that, yeah, something like that. I don't know what the exact time period is, but right now, all we have, we have an immediate need to know where we're going, in my opinion, because we now have a building that needs to be fixed. We have parks that are getting ready to get rehabbed, playgrounds that are getting ready to be rehabbed. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I would like to amend this motion to, to vote for a three-year preliminary contract based on an agreement uh, on the metrics and the agreement on the contract wording that we can finalize at our next meeting or next workshop, either one, um, at uh, 5%. Can I rephrase that? Yeah, you please. I love well, you let me do, I'll say a motion to approve a management contract for three years at 5%, a annual management fee of 10000 $440, a performance metric to be agreed upon within 30 days, that would be a $1,000 penalty from the 10 to 440, uh, and then approval of the contract. I will second that motion. Did you say the 10,000 annually or monthly? Monthly. monthly so. Yes, monthly. So we have a- way We have the framework in what we're looking at. The performance piece is what the next month is of getting an agreement of definitions, what's appropriate, where the guidelines should be moving forward. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hey, can I just, think, sorry, can we just confirm that Grand Manners thinks that, can we pull this around in 30 days? I think she sees no reason why not. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed. Four, two. Five, two. But she, she abstains. Oh, she abstains. Okay. Attention will report a MAC renewal on October 1st. Current contract will. I thought we approved an extension to the. We did. The two. Is it to the end of the year? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just. Oh, okay. Wait. No, but. The, if we don't yeah. renew within 60. And that's what the yeah. motion says too. This will be effective January 1. The new. Right. No, no, we're saying we can be talking in principle, but once November 1st comes, it automatically. So, is, so what you're saying is granting that with this you, approval. Are you willing to waive that requirement that there's no water renewal on November 1st for the extension that we have originally? Yes, we can, yes. We'll be able to maintain contract as is through December 31st, or even if we want to say November 30th. If the 30 days is reasonable, um, so that there are no changes in terms, conditions, pricing, while we figure this. So out. that was our concern that the working right. I heard, yeah. in November 1st is when it all yeah. renews. If we don't yeah. have anything, yeah, we're not going to have something signed between all the seven days. days. So two weeks, weeks maybe. No, if we have it in two weeks, that'd be great. And and look for the for all the residents here and and the board and everybody who's on the Zoom call. This is all about partnership. I've said this to each and every one of you on several occasions. 
in meetings and so forth. This is about partnership, right? And in partnerships, and thank you for the majority vote for three years, because that frankly signifies partnership. And we'll work through the things that we need to continue working through, which is why we're able to agree to reasonable, and I'll use the acronym SMART metrics to hold us accountable. Now, again, that part of that is being reasonable, and that's what we'll need to work through together, right? And so- But you, again, to that point, you heard the things we talked about. I did. They were the kinds of things that we have already discussed in, in the past. Absolutely. They're just putting, we're just putting teeth to the metrics. And so again, this is all about partnership. And in every relationship or partnership, there's ups, there's downs, and no, nothing is perfect. And so we don't have a clause in our contract that would be perfect, nor would, I don't know, any management company, so I think I heard a couple of folks say in any contract, but we are going to work really hard to do the best job possible. That's why we're here. Um, and as far as the staff goes, I have to say, so back to that conversation, in terms of staff, when we were coming on board and when we... When we go into any new community, the best situation would be to keep the staff because the staff has all of the information, knowledge, culture of the community, et cetera. We, as part of our partnership, when we came into celebration, we invested $50,000 in, in, in bonuses for all of the staff to stay, to show how much it meant to us to have those staff stay. I don't know how many management companies do that, but that was something we made sure we did because we wanted them to feel comfortable and be a part of brand managers and continue to stay here in the community. So that is something that is, again, a reflection of our partnership. Now, in terms of staff staying or leaving when new management companies come on board, again, we do this all the time. Sometimes they stay and sometimes they leave because they don't know the unknown and they get frightened about the idea of going to a new match. And so on the occasion that we have to hire a full staff, we do that. And then hopefully we get to introduce the staff that's already there. But again, that is that is a kind of a rule at real when you put that situation in front of staff. So thank you. Thank you. Next steps. I know we had the conversation last week on performance metrics. Yeah. I'm, waiting. I'm waiting on Celia for that. I just I just need her. That from her, I can get. Can you? Okay. All right. Not, not, if not, we we could have uh, at, at, if we could we could have a discussion about what they were. I I, I think okay. if I had that list in front of me again, I. Pretty much remember what the reason I say that is the ball is in our court. Yes. Finalize that to then provide to Grand Matters. They review it. And then if we have a conversation at the workshop or prior, as far as hashing out details and revisions and all that kind of stuff, then we can have those conversations as it gets to a final form that every both sides. I just, I just need this stuff. Knock on my door. <laughs> One we comment, can discuss it. One comment I'll say that what Gary brought up is I think we do need an independent third party, which if that's a specific committee that does it, I don't think it should fall on the board to handle those metrics. It so fall on a committee either. Nobody took the task force. I won't have that. And that's that was an oversight from me at the workshop. So Gary and the task force, I did read the whole not the whole write up you did, but there were definitions for things that were provided to us. So that was an oversight in our conversation that I give my apology to that group. We're not overlooking you. There was great work you guys did. We will incorporate it in our performance metrics that we're tweaking and working. So from my standpoint on the performance, the notes we had that night, we need to incorporate. We also need to go back to that report to make sure we incorporate some of those other definitions that they already did the legwork for us. We don't need to recreate it. Yeah, and, then, and that's actually yeah, that's that's the, that's the primary stepping off is that is that report. Um, and I'll reiterate that the contract that the task force did um, advise on and make changes to, we did send to legal. Legal approved it. We did send to Grand Manners, and they approved it. So we are very appreciative of all the task force task force efforts and expertise. Yeah, we are taking their advice. So we are taking their advice. 
All right, uh, moving on to uh, action item B. Motion to approve CJC Canoa Crow cost sharing agreement. Motion to approve. Second. I'll, I'll second. Abstaining. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Um, I guess I'll ask ask you. Uh, do you did you were you provided the um, job description for the marketing position? I do have a job description that is a draft from our communications committee. That is a bit rare for space. Do you, do, you mind, do you mind sharing it? Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you want me? If you could just read it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it long? Or email it. That's fine. If you want to just email to where else, I'll read it real quick. Because there was some. Um, there's some uncertainty there with section three that I wanted clarification on. Can you? Oh, we're trying to pull that up. Just the comment with the uh, in the CJC meeting yesterday. Uh, CJC and Kavanaugh. Uh, well, CJC approved it, and all I think he's going to have. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't need to approve it. So That's where. Yes. Put it on. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to make a suggestion to CJC if I can. I don't know if that's <laughs> possible. Just like a suggestion. Um, I would suggest going forward so we aren't continuously having to, you know, do these cost sharing agreements and to, um, to you know, negotiate different terms. If CJC would like to possibly amend their charter to find a mutual and inclusive agreement for both sides, and that way it's not something that has to continuously be coming. CJC. Over. We're gonna. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. All oh, right. If you could amend the charter language. Yeah, we'll present that to okay. everybody. That might be. You and don't have to keep doing this. Everything is on the table for discussion. And yeah. As the year progresses, we'll figure out what fits, what doesn't fit, mm -hmm. and massage it into what is a mutually acceptable. Mm -hmm. Something that's, you know, um, beneficial for both sides. And then. Because I'll be point blank, I think that. Parcel section is complete garbage and never should have been there in the first place, but yes. that's what's there. So that's what we have to abide by. Yeah. And next year, right. If the there's some percentage or something else that could be agreed upon, then that's that's what we'll so look through. Uh, any other comments? Was in favor of approving the agreement? All right. Well, I'll, I'll okay. I thought I mean, well, there was another question out to. Oh, we said job description. Oh, my job. I'm sorry, I forgot the job description. I'm trying to find it. She sent it in a Google Doc. It hasn't been floated by the full committee as well. It's just been something she started a rough draft. Okay, well, um, that's fine. We we okay. can go into that. Can I ask Kanoa to speak to the job description? I don't. I. I'm just curious what the well, job description like. It, it, yeah. What it's in. Tailing. I can what I can speak on because I that job description is very just from one person drafting it based off of mm -hmm. what we have from our communications job description. Um, so far, as far as what has kind of been over a consensus is the budget for the compensation of that position mm -hmm. um, has been discussed, as well as that that role is going to primarily support marketing for Kanoa businesses um, and using our CJC platforms. Uh, to do so. Um, we're doing a little bit of that now that when we hired our communications manager that we said, you know, when we were in those discussions that a small scope of their work will be working to promote Kanoa businesses. Um, and that was e even ex provided an example this past weekend with the Oktoberfest by Lex in downtown. And what was the budgetary amount that has been discussed? In let's, um, so let's do that in an executive session. Those numbers are. 
as a personal discussion. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but isn't it going to be posted on Grand Manor's website? They put they put what the budget is for each position. Every position that they post online has well, a budget. Until it's not there, I don't think we need to talk about it. If people want to find it, it's there. And <laughs> once it's once it's out there, then it's public knowledge. Then we can. <laughs> But I think Jacob, if you can, I, I make, what you're saying. it's not. If right. you can make, uh, make a takeaway of once that job description is complete, to send it to both the Canela and Provo boards. Absolutely. For that's the plan of motion for it. Once I, I uh, the communication committee gets me a version that they want to pass forward, but I can also shop it with both of you as it, as we go through the process. Okay. Thank you. I. I Sorry. Do I have to recuse myself from this too? No. 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 You don't. No. You sure? Positive. Okay. Your son does not work for Canola. Okay. <laughs> I understand. All right. Uh, C. This is the motion to approve the 2025 Pro budget. Motion. Second. Discussion. A question. <laughs> okay. I think there is, I, I probably should have, I don't know if this is something I should have asked sooner or what. Was there a reason why only the like high level budget was sent out to the residents versus like a more detailed budget? I believe that one pager is what the process has been. This is what we've always sent out. There's the one pager of what the prior year was, what an actual or projected for the current year proposed and then what the inflation adjustments are okay uh, and then yeah as far as the finance committee meetings and the prior workshops we had the line by line out there for discussion yeah and, everyone, yeah, so. and just, just for some of the points that were raised one of the things that uh, the, one of the reasons why payroll is going up so much is because we determined that in order to get the kind of employees we need we had to be more competitive we were out in the marketplace and finding that people we're getting much higher salaries for the same kind of job elsewhere. So we had to uh, we had to match those kinds of numbers to get the kind of people we have. And I think when we look at the, the people we I am so impressed with the new communications director's work so far. I am too. So impressed. Like very impressed. I don't want to say I'm impressed with this guy yet because he's here <laughs> and I don't want to say anything. So I'm impressed with him too. Uh, okay. Um, I, I I looked at the a little bit of the CV of the new landscape person. Very nice. I think I think we're getting some really high quality employees, and I think you guys, as a community, are going to be really impressed at, at, in six months or so when all when when they get their feet under them at the the, the changes. So um, yes, with that note, can we introduce the new director of facilities? You may. Here he is, Jacob. You want to introduce him? I'd love to. So in the room we have Christian. Uh, he is our new director of facilities and maintenance. Uh, it's today's the very first day here. <laughs> Picked a hell of a day to start. <laughs> um, Andrew, do you mind addressing the budget regarding the IT costs? Because I know there was a lot of confusion. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up here. I know our, our process is that Eric responds to all the emails. So I'll speak to him a little bit tonight, but if you guys are comfortable, I'll reply back to Cliff's email so he has more information. Yes, yeah, that would be really great. Yeah. Uh, uh, just talking about a few. So other income, there is a number of large breakdowns from covenant suites, uh, late family fees, investment income, all kind of stuff. So I can share that breakdown with you for all that breakdown, how it gets to that large number. Uh, the IT cost, so there was a review done here on the IT costs that were being paid out by CDC and whether that was cost used by COA or cost used by a joint associate that's worth well and that was a reclassification this year where we're taking something that historically was pushed through the CAC, but after further alignment, it, it wasn't appropriate that these were truly COA only uh, assets being used. Uh, so that's where it was reallocated to the, the coral budget, not the CJC budget. So if you look at it, the CJC budget has IT going down by 100,000, Pro has it going up by 100,000. And that's due to that makeup. Uh, let's see. And just a point while you're looking to this, this budget, this budget every year is worked on by our 
our treasurer, and an incredible finance committee made up of brilliant financial and business minds, I think. I mean, we're lucky at Celebration that we have some of the smartest people in the country living here from all over the world. And these guys work their butts off on this thing. Does that finance manager give any uh, credit to this also? Yeah. Jennifer, yeah. you know, absolutely, but I'm stopping the committee really, you know, they sit down and they go through the line by line, line, by line really carefully and, and considerately. And yeah, if we were to separate out all of the live versions of the document, this is draft, I think, seven uh, this year, uh, next year. Yeah, and then I guess last comment would be on the compensation. So I don't know what the region was, but the employee benefits plan that is contractually obligated for us to pay was not in the right big budget. So that accounted for an additional, I believe, 161,000 in proposed 25. So that was part of the increase. And then the remaining increase was the resizing of various positions to bring in better talent for positions where maybe Celebration was trying to skim on compensation to get people in positions where we as a board saw if we're going to bring valuable assets into this community to perform, we need to pay a little bit more. And that's where I was allocated to uh, specific positions, as well as there was a four and a half ad for maintenance tax, uh, captain inspector, and a couple other positions that should alleviate the overall workload of brand managers, associates. In our Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll motion for E, F, and J. Okay. That D. Wait, uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're on D. Yeah, we got D. D. Sorry, let's do D. Let's do D. Uh, motion to approve the 2025 service area budget. Uh, motion. I'll make motion. Second. I'll second discussion. Discussion. Uh, I think the only open item is with Island Village. Uh, there was a last minute request that came in to us. Uh, not sure where the disconnect was because we've been talking about the credit for, I want to say, well over the past few months, and it seems like something was thrown at Jacob just this week. Um, you know, it's something that we hear that request, and in looking at what that adjustment is for the Island Village townhomes. Uh, I think it's appropriate and in line with where it should be. So as treasurer, I support the recommendation of keeping that so that we can proceed here tonight and improve all service area budgets. And I support the A's on Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Uh, now you could do E, F, and G, sir. E, F, and G. Okay. Any discussion? Eric, is there anything on the arc we need to discuss? On, on the arc streamline? Uh, no. No, this is what we've been discussing. Um, and and bluntly, both arc and um, I believe management would, would like to see this approved. Um, we're hoping that this will help with some of the some of the backlog. All right. I I I Yes. Help with that. The more they, they work on these, it allows our art coordinator to help push some of the processing along faster, which will help cut down our lag time. Wait, now is your is your motion for E and F? E, F, and G. Well, G is it's H. Yeah. Not H. My motion. Oh, okay. All right. So E, F, and G. Uh, any other discussion about E, F, and G? And just All so that people paper. are clear, th th yes. there's no, uh, there's no, um, we're still following the rules. I know some people had come up with this. If it's a streamlined approval by management, does that just mean management can approve whatever they want? And the short answer is, is no. That's the purpose of the resolution. So just so that everyone's crystal clear on that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. The mistake is in G, so I will remember to be E, F, H with modification. It's right. 2023 today's date. Okay, so it needs to be changed from September to October. I'll second those changes. Second the changes. All those in favor of the four E, F, G, and H? Aye. 
Uh, Hi. Hey, in the in, in the room, we're still having trouble hearing Jared on the mic. It's cutting out. That's weird because we're all on the same mic. Yeah, but he's like always behind the mic. Well, no, that's an opening direction. That thing. Oh, no, it's. Can you just Here. pull it back, Don? I'm closer I'm gonna, to the monitor. I'm gonna move it. I mean, the screen not seeing him. It's not recognizing. Here you go. Here you go. Speak. I'll just stop speaking. Go. Go. Right. Now you see what you went. Okay. On that note, we are we will have all of the table mic. There's a discussion before the meeting. There will be table mics for every board member at the next meeting. The next workshop. Uh, and a speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, uh, I, I can hear Jared for Parks and Recreation Committee member. Take the motion. So second. What's the motion for what? To appoint a new committee member. Who is that new committee member? Oh. Who? Uh, so who made the moat? Well, okay. I do you want to? So I would make the moat. Well, I feel entertained. It. I would make the motion to appoint Marco Mechia uh, to the rec committee. Okay. Well, motion to appoint Marco. Second. I'll, so I'll second that. Discussion. So I've talked with uh, Victoria, and so we just a little bit of history. Rob Sison um, unfortunately resigned from the committee, so we have six right now. So I spoke with her and just wanted to make sure, you know, the, the committee would be okay with the seventh. Um, Marco obviously has been on the committee in the past. Um, a, just a wonderful representative of celebration in the community and the recreation community overall. Um, I also think that there are a lot of synergies with him being on the special events committee. We've, we've really tried to bring special events and recreation together in you know trying to come together and, and work through um id policies and and events and what have you so i think he's a great addition to the committee and um that's pretty much it and i and i think he can add a lot of value there's not a lot of lead time to get him ramped up not a lot of learning curve he knows kind of what's going on and attends the all meetings right. as is so i think he's ready to go thanks charles all those in favor aye, aye. Motion to appoint a new ARC committee member. Sorry. Uh, I just, I'm, a, I'm opposed, and I want to say that. And I want to explain why. Yes, it's nothing to do with Marco. I, I'm opposed to that motion. I have nothing to do with Marco. Marco is one of the best okay. residents and neighbors in town. I I just, I feel there's a conflict of interest. That's all. Oh, okay. Can, can you so I agree with the conflict of interest, the same uh, uh, the last appointed member. Um, and I would like to say that I also agree. Marco is a very valuable committee member, both to the master plan committee and to lifestyles. But for this specific committee, I will have to vote. So no. Four yeas, one nay, two nays. No. Yeah, what, what is the conflict of interest? Yeah, can you, yeah, what is the conflict of interest? Can you elaborate? I, I don't think that I need to. No. Oh, uh, he actually he stated it on his application. Both of them did with the partner programs. Okay. Programs on the. But but we. And I, I we made made notes of those as well. And you were very <laughs> adamant about that during the committee. You're like, fine to vote. At the, we don't always have to vote. So it's five to two. Okay. Motion to appoint new ARC committee member Eric. Yeah, I would like to make the motion to appoint uh, Robert Reich. I might be pronouncing Robert's last name uh, incorrectly to the committee. I'll second. second, we've got it. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. None. Uh, motion to amend the master plan committee resolution. It looks like we need to put a lot of stuff in there uh, because you guys are absolutely right. The bylaws say you must to be a voting member of a committee. You must be a homeowner. So I guess well, so what happens motion for motion. I'll, I'll make the motion. OK, modify so we can discuss this. Uh, Second. We're Grant Manners. Hold on. Hold on. He's still talking. I was talking before you started. Talking. OK, please go ahead. No, let, let, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jacob, how how was the board presented with an application that against the bylaws that the point of, of management is to filter this stuff and make sure that what we're voting on is is a valid application there was somebody on the dog park committee that was around to last year you didn't have a problem with that then i wasn't aware of that until well, after the fact 
action over the renter. So the reality is that this and that goes back. That application goes back a long way, which I mean, somebody the 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 the, <laughs> the committee application and the variations on that theme, and it's had owner and renter on it. That's why I went and looked it up. I I thought that it was so it may go back many years because uh, we've had renters on committees before i did just read that in the bylaws on this though to jared's point i think that should have been a control of any application that comes in you check it against the property address one to make yeah, sure it says it, I, know, I know i'm just saying one that the person who is submitting the address matches up but also that that address is this is my personal view but right. you need only, to do that now. this is my personal view but only homeowners should be on committees. That, that's, well, that's what our bylaws. It's not just a personal view. I'm telling you, it's in the bylaws. Right. So we no, know. that's for everything but our. Yes. Yeah. So we need to we need to change the master resolution to reflect that you have to be an owner. You have to go on to all the committees and find out who's a renter and remove them and change the application to owner only right. because like i said last week last year on the dog park committee taylor jeff oh yeah go for it if the president will um i'm not sure you're interpreting the bylaws correctly it it says everything but mark it yes but it doesn't prohibit residents renters from being on the committee it's just that the owners, yeah, that's right, they can't vote. But okay. owners can only, are the only ones that can vote, but it doesn't prohibit renters. But, but if they can't vote. <laughs> Long term, they've been here 10, 15 years, I'm going to be support. Yeah, I would be like off okay. They can't do anything. I mean, they can speak, but they can speak as members of the public. I don't know. And basically, when it says vote, I, I, the intent of it, to me is very clear. Vote means to vote in the following election. No, no, no. no. <laughs> what I would, what I would suggest is what I said at the workshop, and take the master plan advisory group's recommendation to have eight members, and to appoint the eighth member whose resume was not given to us whose resume is still not in the folder, but he was on the committee prior. So um, he does have the history. So I would amend the motion. Well, hold on. We're still on the master plan committee resolution. Yeah, I would amend, instead of um, just change it, to eight. change it to eight and not nine. Okay. Then I guess, can we put that as a temporary position just this year so it falls off? Or? Well, we rewrite yeah. the resolution. So yeah. I, I agree with that, but that would be rewritten. So I'll, okay, so I'll modify my motion today. Motion modified, second mo modified. Second. All right. Uh, would uh, does this need a legal interpretation? Thoughts on that? I really think it should because no? it's our interpretation what the guidelines and the bylaws read. Well, what do you okay? No, I I read this really clearly. But also, like I think the board should maybe look at the resumes too. It's not just to fill a spot, right? So like, we're not just filling spots for this committee. We're also looking to see who's qualified for this committee. And again, I will reiterate the recommendation to make it eight and appoint um, Alec to the committee as a prior. Um, yeah, the, the appointment is L. Yeah. That's, that's so at eight yes. and have it. The only changes are make it eight and a point one. That's it. Just that's the only change. Yeah. Make it eight. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Both. Do we vote on K? Yeah, we just voted on K. L is the motion to a point two additional, but that's been modified. You want to modify that to a point one? Right. Modify that to a point one and have it a point out of Ross. Just one conversation here. Takeaway for Jacob: If you kept all of our committees, then let us know if there are any non-homes. Yep. And I think that's something we can address at the workshop. On do we just have them stay through the end of the year, or do we? But again, if it's zero, it's a non-issue. If it's one or two, 
maybe that's fine, but a lot of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Motion to appoint Master Plan Advisory Committee Board Liaison. I'll nominate, oh, I'll make the motion. Uh -huh. And? Nominate Jerry. I'll second. Discussion? He wants it, that's good. I'd like All. to stay with the group for that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to approve electrical repairs for Hippodrome Fountain. I'll motion N, O, and P all together. Great, right, I love that. A second. N O and P second. Uh, did anybody need to discuss? Pretty clear cut. All those in favor? N O P. Aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. Now to the bathroom. This is a bigger one. Uh, motion to approve Lakeside Spring Park bathroom revamp by Hatzel Darbo Design Build Corp in the amount of three hundred thousand dollars. This comes out of reserves and capital because we're taking the bathrooms from their current state to a higher level to make it more like the island village facilities, the the, the nice resort. How motion? Just Lakeside Spring. I thought it was supposed Lakeside and Spring. Lakeside and Spring. It, it is one of the three down three Four total restrooms. Oh, now do, we, showers. do we have a community presentation? We do not have a so then I will motion to table. Okay. Second. Two is required by the bylaws. A presentation for 300 grand. Second from Charles. And uh, all those in favor of that table? All right. All right. November. November, March. Uh, yeah, we should have a presentation on 300 grand. Uh, fee waivers. These, uh, fee waivers. We haven't got any of those. We have the update. There, I have double checked. There is no update from what we have. Do we want to just motion on motion to table a few members? Yeah. R and S motion to table. All right. All those in favor? I'm uh, gonna get a second on the second. Yeah. Thank you. Now to discussion items. Let's start. Uh, let's start with management update first, and then we'll go to the, the uh, charter amendment FA2. So you want to do these now? I can do the management report now. Do the management report. Sure, let's, let's do it. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, first off, I want to thank the community as a whole for the great community assistance with Hurricane Milton uh, recovery. We overall, from our vendors, our pool vendor, our different landscape companies, and our town hall team, really were outstanding by the support of all different hands of the community in this uh, effort to clean up. Uh, thank you for that. This was an exemplary showcase of spirit and sense of place. Our sandbag site during this uh, during this we set a record for Osceola County with the most sandbags dis distributed according to Commissioner Peggy uh, Chaudhry. This was a last minute effort that Peggy Chaudhry was able to get sand in celebration, uh, and we the town hall team put it together with assistance from volunteers on the night before. Uh, While well, most sites were only able to manage two truckloads for an entire day, going to late hours in the evening, Celebration went through three full truckloads of sand per day, two days in a row, and ran out around. This was. Interrupt you, Jacob. Of course you may. I just want to say that the team did an outstanding job being out there at five o'clock in the morning and just getting everything done. There was, there, it was amazing how well orchestrated this went. Was and it wouldn't have been possible without the community volunteers as well. So thank you for that. There were a lot of. Them. Uh, additionally, the truck from the September meeting that was purchased out of the capital fund uh, was acquired and on site that following Friday and has led to an increased efficiency and reduction installed team member process. Thank you to the community and the board. Our kids' night out that happened this past Friday was a huge success, selling out. And we do have another one coming up in December for those interested. As we discussed earlier, we've seen a large increase on our social media outlets as far as communication from celebration. And we recommend um, community members to engage and start following that to follow all of the additional information we are putting out on our social media outlets on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we have our spooky soiree tomorrow that is planning to be a Great event. 
into some more internal items. Our community standards team is currently working on manually moving over all new homes since around 2021 into smart webs from the current Sierra net, net system, along with the majority of all of our island village properties. Uh, this is a quite varying process, but they are doing a great job even being uh, shorted with a large cold uh, plaguing that department. They're able, they're keeping on track. One piece for is Friday. Yes, I'm, did I say tomorrow? I think it's I'm so sorry. I was gearing and ready for it. Ready for it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> um, regarding our pools, we have four pool resurfacings that are coming up. The first one, or right now, the pool permits are in the works and uh, all the permits were filed together. And notice of uh, commencements have started to been, uh, have been signed with three out of the four minutes. One is having an issue regarding the 911 um, address because of the address having a B and they're not recognizing an A to the lot. Uh, we're working through that. That's going to be pool. Uh, that's the third pool out of four. Um, so it shouldn't delay the process in this. Uh, once we get a finalization on, we just had the contract signed tonight, um, we can issue the check and make sure that the permits are in the final spot, we should be set to announce to the community the first closure, the first few weeks in November, that first closure will be of the Spring Lake pool. Once that pool is through its first half of its process, they're going to be moving that crew to the Spring Park pool um, while they work on the resurf or finalizing the resurfacing of that. Uh, we are going to ensure that one lap pool remains open at all times. We do have issues right now on both of the lap lane pool heaters and those tickets have been submitted um, and we are pressing the vendor to come out and service those pool heaters. The ongoing shade structure project. Uh, project. Can I, sorry, can I interrupt just on the pools? Yes, you may. Uh, did they choose liquidated damages or a bond in our contract? Uh, I will have to get back to you on that. I know. Or did that contract? Yes. Mm -hmm. On the shade structures, uh, according to our vendor, two of the pools are finished in, or two of the four shade structures um, are finishing production. These are the two smaller shade structures, which are for the pool equipment. Um, and should be shipped to the site in the coming weeks, then preparing for installation. Regarding the two playground structures for Island Village and East Crescent, um, in the direct response to the communication that you, Katie, shared um, back to management, thank you for that, both permits are needing comment. One has a NOC and 911 uh, and one has just the 911 address on file, and we are waiting for the confirmation back from the Sheriff's Department. Christian, on his first day here, has really taken initiative and dove, in, and dove into this. He's um, reached out to the vendor as well as the general contractor on this project and uh, has reached out to the Sheriff's Department 911, looking into this holdup and thinking that it's going to be moved through in the coming days. We're just waiting on the response uh, from the 911 Department of the Sheriff's. Thank you. Yes. Who will be serving the project manager with Grant Manners for? This play, the shade structure scope. For this, uh, I am the project manager for, for this. Christian is going to be an extreme help. I just don't want to pass a project in the midst. I'll show you. Okay. So you're the guy. Yes, sir. Okay. Stay get paid on the permit to make sure that gets resolved. Is that going to be Christian or you? That is Christian. Okay. Right. Thank you again. <laughs> All right. What else do you have? You that good? concludes my management report. Moving on, uh, unless there are questions. Yes, okay. question. So, where are we at with this smart web? He just, he just mentioned. Smart webs, we are, we're scheduled to go live on November 1st in Covenants. Um, like I said, we have been down about three members in our community standards team a day due to a poll going on in that department. We've been very fortunate to keep it in one department. Uh, but even with that, that is really slowing down their progression on moving it. They still think at this point they're going to be absolutely fine to move forward with that. We shouldn't see. Well, we're talking in November first day. Are we going to be running? I guess Sierra Net and our current policy with SmartWeb at the same time for any transition. Or 
be a hard date of any application on the first has to be a smart web or it's not going to be with that. What's that transition communication? To We're going to make this as seamless as possible. Um, I, Danica wanted to be here tonight. Our community standards manager to speak on this behalf and she had, uh, had to leave ill today. I know that we, when we do a transition, we want to make sure as we are focusing overall the on our communication plans to, commun or to the community on all metrics. So we want to, we will be putting out a uh, communication so that way they're reaching out to the right one whenever it is time to transition over. All right. So yeah. as far as now, it's still business as usual with, with the current process that's there. Sure. Yeah. And 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 so I can speak. So ARC has already been receiving test messages from smart webs. We've already been going through that. The committee has been jumping in and making sure that it works appropriately. So that that process is in place. And I think from the residents' point of view, most residents aren't going to be able to tell a difference. Um, the, it, it's mainly going to be an impact to the committee side more than anything else. The process for individual residents of submitting something in, making sure that they're following up on it, all those sort of things, that's still going to be kind of the, the same process that they're going to get communications back. It's just going to be the committees are going to see something a little bit different on, on their end. And I know, speaking directly from ARC, we've, we've already been jumping in and, and testing that the smart web system as well. And then, thank you. Uh, can I get an update on the EV chargers until? Yeah, and I actually want to ask because I'm, I'm frustrated. Three board members emailed three weeks ago asking to get a copy of that contract. Then we asked for, told that we would have that email, and we still have not received that contract. So this is like the continuing of who is accountable for this? Why is it not happening? And that's probably a Lauren question, not a you question. Like I'm still part of the management. We've team. asked for this contract. Well, I'm going to take ownership of that and make sure I get that out to you tomorrow. If we for awareness, by a thank you, Jacob. Communication with Jose and Lauren, I think back in June, and they said that it was pretty much wrapped up and good to go. But I have yet to see the contract they shared with the board. So. Right. Do we, we have one? Or? I, I want to say that's where the issue is, is something because these were developed in. I'm going to. She'll get an answer I, one way or the other. I saw I, the contract that was voted on by the board in December, but in the December board packet. However, I think we need to see the executed contract, a yeah. copy of the executed yeah, one. And then now that we have our maintenance guy here. What is the routine that, yeah, you check the parks, but our EVs on a bi weekly, monthly, weekly check to make sure that these are all functioning appropriately for the communities? The EV chargers live solely within IT under Jose. Why those are an IT instead of facilities is something that I think we are going to transition because they are mainly a, you know, the asset. asset. Yeah, they're an asset. Yeah, they're a part of asset. Um, yeah, they're definitely not ITs. Part of the issue I know was when I, when I was on these last weeks with us was he was, I know this was a project that he was working on and that the main company that does the smaller units around our, uh, that's the major, was challenging him that they weren't going to service it, but they welcomed that he could get certified to certify or to do that. Um, and that was something he was providing some pushback on, on saying, no, we need to get a vendor out here that has the certification that not, and it's just not a well-known certification that has a, a lot of vendors available, um, that still doesn't provide a reason on why these are, all of our chargers are down. Uh, and we do need to get these resolved for so community can use them as soon as possible. So um, I'll give you two weeks until the workshop, but I hope Grant Matters has all the answers as far as contract side, as far as do we need to hire a vendor to maintain these or will the maintenance techs handle them? all different kinds of things on getting these things up and running and then keeping them maintained and open. How also, where are we the transition to put all the contracts in? It has started, but it is not complete. Okay. Anything else for Jacob? Let's talk about this uh, board uh, the charter amendment FAQ that we all got. Uh, Jacob sent it out to the board. Uh, any comments on this? We've got uh, it. He'll provide some background. Provide the community a little background. Please. 
Um, so as we know, we are in a charter uh, election right now on the uh, the capital assessment. The there was an ask from management to the communications committee to be able to provide kind of an FAQ to best assist our resident service staff on answering these questions without providing any bias. That was the root of where this document comes from. Um, this then this document uh, was shopped between the communications committee and then elevated and collaborated on with the finance committee and the finance committee liaison on Monday, we asked them to stop their collaborations that they worked through over the weekend um, to pass it to the board um, with hopes to get it out to the community soon. And it was suggested that we bring it to a public forum for a full discussion and collaboration of the board. That brings us to where we are now. Thank Perfect. you. I think this is great. I appreciate whoever wrote this. Um, is the 0.5% still, still a problem in this document? Is that... We seem to keep making that mistake. So when I think it's when the number is when the percent is there, then it's just a one decimal point. If there's no percentage used, then it goes to the two. How about we just write instead of um, zero point five percent at the sales price, half a percent, like write it out in words. Then I the agree with Katie. A half of one percent. Yes. Yeah. No, just half a percent. It's too many words. Half a percent. Yeah, that's the problem. It's half of one percent. Half of one. Yeah, half. It should say half of one percent. Or, yeah, I, I, you could put that in words. Half of one. Half of one. And then in parentheses, point zero five. Because people I, are having are struggling with the math behind it. Which part? I mean, it, it's, it's the percent. The zero zero. Use the words instead. Of yes. Just keep right. I get it. Because it's Thanks. hard to do a calculation. You see, if I have the 0 0.05, I can go into my calculator. But, but they're 400,000 times 0 0.05 is $2,000. But what they're seeing here is 0 0.5. So they're putting that into the calculator, 0 0.5, and they're getting like, they're getting 50% instead of. Yeah, we had a lot of people who did. I was terrible in math, and I could figure that out. I get I, the problem. We just need we need to be clear. All right. I just thought that having both both of them would take care of the math nerds and the word nerds. And both. Hopefully, the second bullet in the FAQ will help everyone out. Yes. With the, yeah, because the second bullet kind of covers it. It's like if, if, if you're uh, if you can buy the two hundred thousand dollar house, you will pay the dues. Yeah, that's great. I think having the examples there. I, I mean, if you want to put the multiplier in, yeah. like instead point zero, well, it'll be zero point zero zero five, no percent sign. You could do that. Oh no, no. okay. Because then they can Let's see how to multiply. One half of one percent is the proper wording. So this is yeah. and again full disclosure that I helped write these and I try to do it as unbiased as possible. I, that it truly is factual, even though I have a certain way I'm working that I try to present this to the community as this is the vote for the community on how do you want to proceed as far as do we get this piece or are we gonna do it on do somewhere else? So I think this is that, that yeah, don't I think that's a really good I do see an a, an errant bullet point. Okay. Just for proving. And I'll say, I'll just say, just for my own, because it was mentioned in owner's comments, I, I am voting to support this because I feel it's either we vote for this or next year dues are going to be dramatically different. Well, and, and this is my answer questions. I think this is a yes. great piece. Um, now, and it is very neutral. As a board, to my point, state an opinion. State an opinion. And these are all just our set. And we are all welcome to do so. Um, in support of or against this particular item. Yeah. Which are you comfortable with going around right now individually if, if there's any comments or if you care to say how you're going to vote? Sure, yeah. I'm voting yes because I support the master plan and I want to fund the master plan and I don't want my to go up. I, I, I actually voted yes today um, because 
twofold. The master plan um, committee, um, well, the report did suggest something to do something similar to this. And then the finance committee's recommendation to us, I also support it. Um, and for me overall, personally, it makes sense. Um, I know it's something that I'll have to be paying in the future as well, but it, it makes sense to do it as a one time thing versus to have it put into the dues and perpetually have to like pay this. So for me personally, it makes sense as well. Do you? No. All right, I'm going to ask that. Yeah, I'm voting yes for it. Um, you know, there was a lot of discussion on different options and responsibility, things of that nature, but I think this option that's being presented is, is the best one. It is not a solve all operation problem that there is the master plan, there's town hall, there's gonna be other expenses. Under our current process, we're only bringing in 450,000. That is not enough to replenish our capital fund for future expenses for amenities and things that we need to bring back to hopefully new in celebration. So this is one piece of the puzzle that I believe in going this direction pushes us further away from special assessment or pushes us away from having the jack up dues $200 next year to offset costs for different expenses coming down. I personally, is anybody else? Uh, yeah, how about you, Eric? Uh, I'm voting in favor of it, mainly because it's what the finance committee recommended. And then also of all the reasons everyone else stated, it just, it seems to make sense to me other than having to raise, uh, raise dues. And then also too, I think beyond just covering reserve expenses, we found very quickly that the amounts that we have reserved for in many cases are to restore it back to what something was built at in you know, the 90s. We want to enhance those, which do require an additional capital contribution. I'm gonna say I agonized over this thing and agonized over this thing because I do not like raising the prices that we charge anybody I was 100% opposed to the 1%. I would have been 100% opposed to the 1%. I think that this was a nice compromise in that it's due one year of dues or 0 0.5, 0 0.5%. Half a percent. Yeah, half a um, And the main, main reason for me is yeah, I, I, I'm going to still work. We'll have future arguments about the master plan because I'm not a big fan of some of the master plan, but that's for the future. Um, it's not the master plan I worry about. It's that we uh, we are probably, best case scenario, looking at $2 million to fix down home. That sucks down half of our capital reserves, just like that. Um, plus, housing sales have slowed. Who knows how long that will last? Uh, our contributions to this fund have dwindled and will probably be even lower going forward for a little while based on what I've seen. So I'm going to support it reluctantly, but only if my wife votes with me. Because we have one vote. 30 seconds? Quick question. Could you, Mr. Ball, clarify what the situation is with this? If you transfer your house into a trust or out of a trust, now bear in mind that the trust can't own a property. It has to be transferred into a company or out of a company that the trust owns. Well, I'm going to run that by. Yeah. There's a large part of exceptions that are already built in. Those are not being changed. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's not, Katie, because it says that See. if it's transferred into a trust, there's an exception, or out of a trust, there's an exception. But trust can't own a house. So you have to have a company, an LLC. That's where you get charged. I know this because I got charged here by the town, and I paid it one year's dues. So I think that for clarity, that needs to be clarified. Can you in write documents. that example down and email us? I'll, I'll, I'll can send you the email. email. We'll, write, we'll write it by the attorneys just to make yeah. it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be sending you know, all, all the exceptions. Well, the exceptions take up an entire page in the charter. Please read it. Thanks, Gary. Okay. Moving along. <laughs> moving along. Moving, 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 moving. Lance, uh, are we okay with this going out? Does Char Char Charles want to speak to the. Charles is not there. Oh, okay. Last comment on that. Yes. Uh, and the communications committee, they did a great job with that. Yeah. They reached out to finance, finance provided money them for two. So. Well, thank you to you for championing this through yeah. the whole year. So thank you, Andrew, for thank you, man. your work on this and the whole process of this.
All right, moving on to landscape grading. Uh, landscape grading was added as a discussion item for Charles. He's gone. Okay. Yeah, I think at the workshop we said with the hurricane, we need to do a reevaluation of all that stuff. So we'll pick it up next time. And do it to add it to the chat. I can share is with landscape grading, we plan to use the same uh, format we gave to the board uh, for September. Next week, we are scheduling for myself and Christian, our new facilities director, as well as our main vendor for all of our parks to be on a ride along as well when we do this landscape grade. So let's kick that to seat workshop agenda. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, hang, hang, hang on though. I, I just wanna say though that the, the landscape grading has been completed. I wanna make that clear for the committee, or not for the committee, for the community. So there was grading that was already done. Those, those inspection sheets were completed. We just now, feel that we need to reevaluate them because a hurricane has drastically changed a lot of those situations. That's fair. Thank you. Almost the end of the year, but our focus, I think, truly should be on long run and trying to get some better speed for what that's going to look like. I know that our landscape contractor is helping that. We're developing a plan right now. Yeah. So out of all of it, I think that's always been an issue all year long that we're working with. And yeah, I know we're still waiting on things. Okay. For the community, that, that is definitely- That's a high point. It's going to come to the end of the year. Uh, the workshop uh, agenda. My, I, I have to make sure that we collectively have workshops treated as a workshop and allow more interaction during the workshop. We're limiting it at the board meeting, but we're- Workshops. Fair point. And- I'm Trying to move and I had to get out. I, and I understand that, and I appreciate. It. I always want a short meeting too. But what I think typically, though, is with board meetings, we did, we did take questions. From we, yeah, 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 with board meetings, we do homeowner comments, and we typically don't answer questions throughout the meeting. But in workshops, um, we do dialogue. not have the board owner comments typically in the beginning. I know sometimes you. Oh, okay. Yes, but well, like did, typically, yeah, I did try to get in just be, just to I did try to get questions and yeah. I I left abruptly because I had to go. But then throughout a workshop, like uh, um, residents can ask questions, which did happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I agree. Does it make sense that instead of just having the owner comment fill in, have a, a sheet, but for which items they want to speak to? So as we work, no, because it, because it, it does help questions do it. questions do come up in the course of and the, last week's last week's workshop. We had a huge was a very long agenda, so I will say that too. Like it was, we had a lot to discuss. So okay, um, going forward, I I I I hear you, and I no, but I think we had to kind of like <laughs> a little bit okay. to that point. If you if we want to leave off anything that is consent agenda. Job. Yeah, let's do. if it's coming from reserves or it's a consent agenda item, we got to end the workshop. When you meet, well, sometimes we have to. They don't need to be on the agenda. We vote at the work. We, we can meeting. vote. Yeah, they don't need to be a discussion at the, at the the workshop is more for the for the kind of discussion we had last week. Yeah, which was the the contract, uh, the the bigger issues that take that we don't want to spend thirty minutes in this meeting when we're trying to get through action items. So yeah, um, that would be great. Uh, is this a hard direction to management, or is this something to try is, to? Try to. Okay. okay, try to, yeah. Thank so what is it? What is it? We're going to keep the agendas the same, and then we are going to make sure we're acknowledging residents. As they raise their hands. And during the workshop to make sure we're. Trying to still. And not in online. Trying still to move it along. Yeah. We're yes, only yes. We also like we could do a time for. I yeah, think. but no, we'll just. That's me, because we let people speak at the workshop. And it was on social media that we didn't let them speak. Yeah, I was surprised because we did. I remember distinctly mm -hmm. recognizing various people who are here tonight. I think, yes. But I think someone was left out online. And I, I know you don't have the online. I don't see the But so maybe if uh, it's like a, something for you, like during workshops, if you can like keep a lookout for residents that want to like um, chime in on a dis on an item. For Make sure they raise their hands. Yeah, if their hands are raised. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we can find them to raise their hands. I know we have board done a good job. It's only 8.03, so I don't have any board comments. And I'll make a motion if anyone else. We well, have town hall. Oh, we do. Uh, no, I, I, I I have one more thing though, and it's it's a little bit related to the management update. But Jacob, we need to put a timeline around the response in regards to the trees for the South Village townhomes. Great. Yes. Good one. 
I know that Rose was going to get back to them, but we need to provide a timeline for the response. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Celia, you have some comments. Yeah, I have. Uh, I'm statement to read. Can I have five minutes, please? You may have five minutes. Okay, good. Because this will be my last five minutes. Ready? Go. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read the statement to read. Effective immediately, in German of this board meeting, I'm going to be resigning my seat as a pro director. I can no longer, in good faith, be part of the board. Everything I do as a director is sabotaged by certain people in keeping us from doing the best we can for our community. I've enjoyed this ride, but I'm done. I've done nothing wrong, however, when my family and my granddaughter is brought into the negativity, I have to say enough. I know it's about five or four, destroy, four or five destroys in our community. And yes, social media is an evil force, but it really doesn't matter what those people think I've done, I'm done giving my time to the community. I'm tired. To the members of the Condon Council, it's been my pleasure representing as board PA time, the 13th Condo Associations in our community. Please continue to have a voice in our community because condo owners are a large group of owners. To the Celebration Foundation and the CDD, it's been my pleasure serving as the board liaison for community connections. Please keep this moving forward. It's a positive impact on the residents. To the Celebration Foundation, my time as board liaison has been a pleasure seeing all positive impacts you make in our community. And to Kathleen, thank you for your continued dedication to the foundation and for always acknowledging your team and your volunteers and teaching me at the end of the day, it's all about the foundation and the good job it does. To the Covenants Committee members, thank you for your dedication to our community and enforcing our community standards. To the NPAG members, thank you for your vision. To the members of the Special Events Committee, thank you for the great job you do. For my short time on the Dog Park Committee, your passion for our poor babies is wonderful. To the Technology Committee, thank you for the lessons you've taught me. To the Recreation Committee, thank you for thinking outside of the box and to Victoria, you brought. To the Artisan Park Committee, I'm sorry that my seat on the board has become an issue. I guess we now know the truth. To all of the Town Hall team, thank you for your dedication to our community. You show us every day and continue to try to make our community the best we can. I know some of us have not agreed on certain things, and most of you have always supported me. But at the end of the day, we all have the community's best interests at heart. I've served on over uh, at over 100 board meetings, 384 committee meetings, 16 condo council meetings. 12 community connection meetings, 35 task force meetings, 175 service area meetings, 70 workshops, 42 appeal meetings, five litigations, four organizational meetings, six three hour tours touring management company, four executive sessions, if not more, and three board foundation board meetings. I can put my head on my pillow at night and know that these three and three quarter years I serve the community is with only the best intentions. I hope you're listening to that, Mr. State. If anyone wants to reach out to me, don't hesitate. I'm walking away from the people who put me down. I'm walking away from the fights that will never be solved. I'm walking away from trying to please people who will never see my worth. The more I walk away from these things, my my that poison my soul, the healthier I will be. So to that, thank you. I will continue to volunteer my time to our community for organizations that matter. We are so blessed to be part of this amazing community. So this email will be going out to the board management and everyone that I'm copying on this and like copy at the adjournment of the meeting. So if anybody doesn't have anything to say, I I'll make the motion to I, adjourn. I, I, no. I don't want to. I don't want to move to adjourn yet because I'm done, Don. I would like. 
Celia, I'd really like you to reconsider. I totally get where you're coming from. I totally get where you're coming from. I have been slandered by those same people on the porches claiming that I had some uh, un untoward Don't. purpose here. I, I like you. I get it. I get thought my, my granddaughter into it. I, I don't I, I, because I, somebody posts stuff and people feed into it and somebody saying elections have consequences. Well, that person that posted against my granddaughter is if they try to run, will not be winning that election. I'm done. And I am not sitting across from him anymore that sends nasty things on social media about me. I'm done. I'm done, Your Honor. I know. See you That's it. I'm done. I get it. I want to thank you for the time I served with you because we brought some sense. We accomplished the playground, but I am fine and I'm done. So you can go home and tell Fred that I resign, Mr. Stane. I'll motion to adjourn. No, you told me to resign. Okay, we have a motion of a second. Can I say something? No, we have a motion in a second. We're adjourned. You can say something. I'll second. I'll second. It's, that means it's over. Motion in a second. Oh. Meeting's done. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Celia. Thank you.